context and data flow diagram request, Amazon online shopping system. Now the following is a request from one of my viewers, Benham, and he would like me to look at Amazon and within the context of its depot, finance and product distribution. So let's firstly have a bit of a look at what Amazon does. Now Amazon is one of the biggest businesses in the world and a pioneer in the area of e-commerce. Amazon started as one of the first major online shopping sites where people from across the world could go online and search their catalogue, purchasing items which would then be delivered to their door wherever in the world that might be. Amazon has expanded into the areas of digital products and streaming services these days and continues to be a powerhouse on the global market. So as said, today we're going to look at Amazon's traditional business model of selling physical products within these contexts of depot, finance and products. So firstly, we'll take a look at a context diagram, trying to give us a bit of an idea about the external entities and what impacts on actual Amazon's system. So here is Amazon's system, the customer accesses the system through their account details and the customer types in a search criteria to look for specific products and when they see products they like okay they select them and they add them to their cart obviously which is stored within amazon once they've got a few items they like the next step there is a payment request to their bank and essentially to buy all the things stored in their shopping cart the bank will then give them an approval, they'll pay for the customer's products, provided they've got the money to pay for them, otherwise they'll be declined, and then the customer will get a receipt of the transaction. These products will then be packaged by Amazon, sent to the customer's door. Now, this is obviously one side of the customer and essentially their interaction with Amazon's online system. But we've got to think what's happening within Amazon. People are buying products, the products are decreasing in quantity, Amazon then needs to purchase more products. So essentially the next step in this system is Amazon needs to contact suppliers. Okay, and what they do is create a purchase order saying we need X amount of new products, okay, to restock in order to keep uh, able customers buying these products. So a purchase order is sent to the supplier. The supplier will then give me an invoice saying, oh, well, if you want this amount of products, it's going to cost you this amount of money. Okay, Amazon then, like any other business or individual, needs to contact their bank. Okay, and their payment request is sent for the purchase order products. Okay, the bank then will give their confirmation, so the payment for the ordered items. Amazon then can pay for the stock from the supplier. Okay, and the supplier will give a, rece a receipt from the transaction. Okay, so just a bit of context there about how this is working. But the big thing we've obviously got to look at is a data flow diagram illustrating all of this. So let's begin. So firstly, as we said, we've got the customer. They're typing in Amazon's URL and they go to the website. In order to get into the actual business side of the website so they can actually start buying products, okay, they need to enter in their login and password, okay, which will be checked against a customer details database. And if the account matches, they're approved. From here, they can start navigating the website. So they enter in a search criteria in order to search items. Okay, and this allows them to have a look through Amazon's product database. Okay, so they can see all the products that are stored within them based on that search criteria. When they want to view a specific item, they will click on the specific item and the specific items details are retrieved from that product database. Okay, and they get all the information about that. Now, if they like a specific item, they're obviously going to click add to cart. Okay, and that gets added to their shopping cart. All right, so from this point now, they could be going to lots of different pages and seeing lots of different products, okay, and adding more and more products to their shopping cart. Now, as said, these card items need to be stored somewhere, and that's obviously going to be stored on the customer details database. So if they leave the website now, come back at a later date, these items should still be stored within their customer details. From here now, we need to make our purchase. And we're obviously purchasing the items that are stored in the shopping cart. That's the step. So at this next process, we need to retrieve that data from the customer's database. Okay, so we can actually calculate the totals and how much all this is going to cost in order to purchase the items. Obviously, then at this point, we're now going to contact the bank. Okay, so whatever the total cost is of all these items in the shopping cart, it gets sent to the bank, a request is made, and then the bank will give an approval. The items get purchased. So the purchase is made. Amazon will need to record this as a new record in their transaction database saying this purchase has been made at this date and this much was paid. From here, okay, the transaction is deemed successful. We generate a receipt for the customer and the customer gets their receipt, obviously. It might be emailed to them, displayed on screen, whatever. And they may also get an actual receipt stored on their actual database as well. So they can backtrack it and it's stored somewhere on Amazon's actual databases from there. So that's it for the transaction part with the customer purchasing the actual items. 
from here now we're going to look at the depot the actual sending of the products to the customer so at this point the customer order then would be sent uh, into actual the factory okay and Amazon now would have to put all the items together we need to package all these items so we can send them to the customer okay so they'd package all the items based on an order report that would need to be generated someone would look at that order report collect all the items okay and then actually package it up for the customer from here once the order is compiled delivery needs to be scheduled so we schedule the delivery okay for a specific date okay that date then would need to be stored on a delivery database so the delivery details would be stored on a delivery database so that we can see when we're planning on sending something out and saying basically it's ready to go once the delivery gets sent we need to log that the delivery was sent okay so the delivery has been dispatched it was sent at this date and obviously that will be stored on the database too so the time of distribution will be sent this date at this time and also as we know with a lot of um, products they've got RFID on them tracking data would be stored on the product too because remember Amazon's um, selling products globally they can get lost in many ways shapes or forms okay so the tracking data would probably be stored on the delivery database as well so they can track the products as they're being delivered to their actual customers so that's it with the delivery side okay of what's happening with Amazon's products from there the next thing we're going to look at is essentially as we said when we we're at generate the order of the, uh, of the customer we're getting all these items so this is where the item quantity within Amazon's databases are getting depleted okay so obviously after this they need to purchase more products so we're going to go back to the generate customer order report because I think that's when the products of quantity is dropping from here we need to deduct the purchase items okay from the product in, uh, inventory so we need to update the product quantity and by updating it, we're saying we've got less of that product now and that needs to go into the product database okay and that also links back to when customers are viewing items and they can see the product is out of stock and they can't really purchase it that goes for a lot of online shopping sites okay so the product gets updated okay when it's reduced stock and stored in the product database now once a product does get to a low quantity from here we need to flag the item and say this product's quantity is low okay in order for Amazon to be successful they need to be replenishing their products before they run out of them because thousands of people are on Amazon's site at a time and basically if they can't sell them the products they want they're losing thousands of dollars okay so they need to flag the item and say the item is low in stock from here this is where the ordering process starts so they need to order the items that are low and they generate that purchase order that we saw in the context diagram okay so they put the purchase order together they say we need this amount of items and then the next step is they need to contact the supplier they probably have a suppliers database and that's where they access the supplier details from so this purchase order would be sent to the finance department okay the finance department would process the invoice okay and then they would obviously make the request of the supplier okay so they put an invoice together and say we need these amount of products the suppliers obviously going to send back okay the invoice saying this is how much it's going to cost you guys now at this point the finance department would probably say yep it's okay but they do have every chance at this point to say no we're not paying that and they won't order more they might try to find a different supplier but essentially once they get the uh, invoice back and they think it's okay and a fair price okay they will approve it and then they're going to pay the supplier in order for Amazon to pay their suppliers they need to contact their own bank so the items cost goes to Amazon's bank they approve it the supplier can be paid so the supplier will get paid by Amazon's bank they will get a receipt from the supplier okay and that will likely be stored in the suppliers database that another transaction taking place this is how much they paid for these products okay and it happened on this date so we've retained that data about purchasing from the supplier for future reference the next step from here is the items will get delivered to Amazon okay that's the next time that will happen in this actual system the supplier will send them to Amazon they will receive the delivery and obviously once they've received the delivery they need to update their product quantity again and replenish those items they've got more of the quantities that were running out of product so they need to record that on their actual updated database so that will get stored once again on their product database so I hope you can understand what's going on here when you look at this at the end it looks like an absolute complete mess but I hope it gives you a good understanding of what goes on in the bigger picture of Amazon's online business essentially what happens at the customers end when they're going online looking at items purchasing them okay contacting their bank okay so they can obviously buy items online 
what happens on Amazon's end when they need to send these products to the actual customer after they've been bought and essentially as well what happens when Amazon's inventory gets low and then they need to buy items from their supplier and the processes they go through so Benham this was a great suggestion I really enjoyed making this I hope it makes sense here and I hope it was a good help